Hi everybody, my name is Esther Yang and I'm really very grateful to have Dave Rosenberg with us. He has the movie coming out called The Reunion and it's going to be showing in Nyack, which is like an hour and a half from New York City. I am going to go, Jonathan's going to go and a couple of my teams are going to go and they have partnered up with us. It's August 18 at Nyack and you can check it out at The Reunion. Uh, Phil and David's going to tell all the website link and everything else. But uh, welcome to Esther Yang and friends, and I'm looking forward to it. This is about, we're going to talk about how childhood bullying affects adulthood. Dave, you know, what makes you uh, want to make this movie? Well, when I, thank you so much for having me on. Um, when I was a kid, I had a group of friends um, in Long Island in New York when um, I was in elementary school, and we were really close. You know, they were, they were my buds. And... Um, between sixth and seventh grade, uh, I went to sleepaway camp. And when I came back, none of them would talk to me. And I didn't know why. And um, first day of junior high, I got off the bus and walked to the, the this long line by the middle school. And um, one of my friends uh, stepped out and knocked my books out of my hands. Another one stepped out and said, we don't want to be friends with you anymore. And I just remember taking this long, sad walk to the back of the line. and. For the rest of the year, you know, I got bullied. They called my house, said, you know, said things about me, about my family. You know, there was some physical stuff. Uh, it was torture. And you had no idea um, why they behave like idiots. No, no, and I wasn't the only one this happened to. So, you know, kids kind of do that: turn on one person, make one person the scapegoat, and that sort of thing. Um, they called it getting dissed. Yeah. I actually, I actually wrote another screenplay called Dissed. Ah, um, I'm looking forward to seeing that movie. <laughs> but uh no but I, I don't know you know it, it could have been over a girl it could have been that, that there were things that I did that upset people but yeah. you know they may not have known how to communicate it um, but it happened and then uh, about 12 years later I was in Union Square and I ran into the guy who you know I felt had kind of spearheaded this and um, it just freaked me out so I told two of my buddies Andrea and Din who were my actor friends who are in the movie uh, and Din said, you have to write about this. Mm. And Andrea said, you have to confront this guy. Mm. So I kind of set about doing both. And the three of us were creating this story. And then Andrea was kind of preparing me to confront this guy, which wow. I eventually did. What's that? I said, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Super which wow. Which I eventually did. And, and he actually apologized. And we, had, we actually had a nice, a nice talk. And we're Facebook friends now. Um, but uh, we went on to make the movie like 15 years later. It was a very long process. So we made the movie in the last three years and, and now we're in festivals and about to sign a distribution deal. Wow. You know, I wish you the luck with the distribution deal. And Thank but you. even the process, it took you 15 years to make this movie? It took 20. Um, wow. I mean, really, we worked on it for about eight years. We worked on the script for about five and then we did a reading. Um, and so that that process took about eight years that was when i was in my 20s about 20 years ago and then um and then we split up because we couldn't raise the money we got into a fight um we just didn't know what we were doing you know and then for 10 years i went to la i became a middle school teacher uh andrea you know had a family um uh, din was acting in, in new york city and 10 years later i kind of had started having signs and intuitions that it was time to make this, my grandmother passed, so I came into some money. Um, I had two students, two years in a row, two female students who said, Mr. Why are you here? Why are you not like acting around on some red carpet uh. somewhere? Because I was always talking about how I was going to make this movie and I'm an actor. And they basically confronted me and they were like, you know, you're talking about following your dreams, but you're not doing it. Mm. And uh, I woke up at like four in the morning one morning and I was like, it's, it's got to happen right now. Mm -hmm. I grabbed a piece of paper and I wrote down some steps that we needed to take. I needed to take, went back to New York, met with my friends. We had an amazing weekend, you know, creating again, talking about doing the movie and um, the rest is history. Oh, and you guys are not fighting anymore. I mean, you, I mean, <laughs> that was interesting that how did you even, and that itself is the reunion, right? Right, you guys, right, right. That's you true. guys, you guys were like friends. That's true. You got into a fight. I mean, in the, in your adult life. It's almost like history right. repeating itself. And well, yeah, and that happened all throughout the process. I mean, art was really, life was really imitating art. There was a lot of conflict. There was a lot of, you know, what we were trying to tackle in this movie was basically how do you confront somebody 
when you have all this fear and you have all this anger without being violent or without running away? How do you confront any situation without fight or flight, right? Yeah. That's really what we were exploring. And so that came up uh, tons of times throughout this process. Um, some of the friendships have gotten repaired. Some of them have not, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, uh, and that's just the hard truth. You know, you make a film with friends and it's beautiful because you're all passionate about it. And when we were acting, it was kind of easy because we were friends. The hard part of that is you're working in a business mm. with your friends and egos come up mm. and money comes up mm. and credit comes up and how is this movie going to look comes up. Mm. And that part was really challenging. So did Andrea and, and obviously you are in this movie. Yeah, Andrea, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did Andrea and, and, and you, the three of you that um, yeah. are back into this movie and then no it's it's hard like you know I think I think when you open up your emotions about bullying and unconsciously in my opinion that also surfaces up for them and the people in yeah. it because the emotions are in the way and some people just you know either can do it or cannot do it I mean um, I mean I envy you for being able to do it because I barely make it with my own drama in my real life situation <laughs> and that's really really hard. So uh, you know, tell me, it's going to be in Nyack, right? And how do people uh, see this movie, the trailer, I know the trailer is just thereunion.com? Yeah, thereunionfilm.com, yeah, okay, so if the you go to thereunionfilm.com, everything is there, including information about Super Happy Healthy Kids, which is on uh, our uh, resources page. But we're on Facebook at The Reunion Film. We're on Instagram at the.reunion.film.nyc. We're on Twitter at thereunionfilm.nyc. But you don't have to worry about any of that because if you go to our website, thereunionfilm.com, that leads you to all our social media. That leads us to information about NIAC, which is, in fact, Wednesday, August 18th, 9.45 p.m. If you're in New York, please come. There's still tickets. Uh, we're, we're starting to get close to selling out, I think. Um, so... Get your tickets. Yeah. Um, but it, this film looks amazing on the big screen. See it on the big screen. No, I always see it on the big screen because a lot of my friends are artists and people, you know, that's why I would never buy pirate film or things like that because I just think like this is my way of supporting my friends. Um, I don't have a TV. I don't know if you know that, but some of my viewers, <laughs> I don't have a TV. So I go to movies all the time. So I am looking forward to going to the NIAC. And I just want to tell people that you don't have to go to 945. We actually plan to go early and enjoy the trip at the NIAC because NIAC is really beautiful. So we plan to have dinner there and then go to the movie. So you can, for people that can do it, you can actually go to the NIAC and have like a mini little vacations. We have to still work. So we're going to be working in NIAC you know and bring our computer and this is uh in one hand like the pandemic is bad but in the other hand we like it really tests our ability to work things remotely so we're going to bring our work at nyack and then you know have dinner and then go to the movies and looking forward looking forward to it and what is it i mean you grew up in california or you grew up in new york in new york in long island okay and then yeah. is your family still still in long island Pretty much, yeah. Mom goes down to Florida a bit, but yeah, she's got still got a house in Long Island. Dad's in Nyack. My dad's in Nyack, which is really exciting for him. Oh, I'm looking forward to meeting town. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sisters are in New York, um, so yeah. So they're all Most coming. Topics. They're all coming to Nyack then. Uh, dad is coming. Sister might come. Not sure if mom and the other sister will come. Okay. They, but they've seen it before. They were at the New York City premiere. Oh, I'm sure because, like you know, it's it's. I'm sure they still remember during that time too i'm sure it was a hard time for you yeah it's hard for my mom to watch it mm. she still feels some guilt about it that she could have done something and she really couldn't have but that's, well, that's what do you think stuff. like what do you think like you know i was born in jakarta and i went to school in singapore and i came here and you know i was bullied like you know the joke is now i can think of it as a joke the joke is like you know i uh they bullied me in three different languages in two different countries in three different school but um what is your advice? I mean, now you're a middle school teacher. I mean, what is your advice for parents to deal with, like, when your kids are being bullied? Yeah, Esther, that's a hard one. You know, I, I hear some people say, you know, if somebody's bullying you, you just, just punch them in the face. <laughs> I, I mean, seriously, and I, and I, and I, cause I'm trying to be truthful, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't want, I don't want a BS, you know what I mean? Cause I've heard people say, when I punched him in the face, that was it, it was over. So, Part of me wishes I would have done that to be to be totally honest with you. What I wish I would have done though, you know, if I didn't go that route is like honestly do martial arts. 
like you do, like I did in my 20s. Because I, what I found by doing martial arts, you know, or self-defense, is that I didn't need to fight. You right. Know what I mean, I, I knew inside of myself that I could take care of myself. And there was a confidence that I had that would not lead me to being bullied. You know, I think being bullied, you know, sometimes can, can be a challenge, you know, a bit of a rite of passage. And the thing that was unfortunate for me is I just didn't know where to go. I just didn't know who to go to. My mom did the best she could, but I think my mom was really scared. My dad wasn't around. My stepdad and I didn't get along. Uh. So I, I think, you know, I would tell a kid, you know, find people to talk to. Right. Find a team of people so you're not doing it alone. And the thing with kids, particularly in middle school, is they keep everything in. They keep everything. I had a girl, uh, a student who said to me, Mr. You know, nobody likes me and I'm not popular. Mm. And I was like, that is so not true. Like, mm. I see you in class. Like, you're you. So, like, the way that middle school kids see the world, you know, is, is very different oftentimes than what the reality is. So I say, you know, find your team. Do things that you really enjoy. I think I just kind of went into a cocoon and was like, I'm just going to avoid this and hide from this because I was terrified. You know, I hid out in the library during lunch. When I got home, I went to sleep. I just wanted to avoid. Yeah. You know, I say find something you love, whether that's a sport or acting. I wish I would have had acting. I wish I would have had a theater club back then like I teach right now mm -hmm. or a film class like I teach right now. Mm -hmm. Find some way to put that energy, you know, into something. Um, I think as parents, so, I think as parents is difficult though, yeah. because my daughter yeah. was the best child up to 11 and then mm -hmm. starting 12 to like 17, it's like a nightmare. I'm living like yeah. in a nightmare. I think it was very difficult and I would like shook her shoulders. I said, what did you do to my child? You know, because she was so like, um, I, I think because of the hormones and everything else, like constantly changing, I think it's really, really hard. Uh, but I do recommend, even for Super Happy Healthy Kids, like we do uh, martial arts, you know, once a week, no matter what. They don't have a choice. And so, uh, you know, I think parents do need, like you said, because I think what do you do when you don't, like your, when your kids don't want to talk to you? You know, and I think even though they're bullying, but they don't want to share things, right? And I think um, the girl was, you know, like, very fortunate to have you where she can share things right but not all kids want to share things i know with my daughter she doesn't want to share she wants to just stay in her room that you know do anything i think our saving grace um her name is grace actually our saving grace she, we're not allowed to have like i don't allow her to have phone or computer in her in her room so that means she just got to be stuck so she has to go outside and then be able to talk and that was really hard so what i recommend to parents from my experience with super happy healthy kids is that for you to like really kind of like gently force them to go to martial arts and really being active whether you're doing soccer or you're doing baseball and maybe put them in a different set of group of friends like what you did right because when you're st stuck with the summer camp and then you have they're coming back to middle school uh like i think you need to set a setup of friends so i think that's what i recommend to parents but teenagers they don't talk i mean you know or with you in your case like they have your uh as you so as a middle school teacher that must be kind of challenging too because you become like their therapist their friends their teacher i mean how is yeah. that for you well it's interesting i mean you know obviously coming from being bullied and that being the, the hardest time of my life in middle school i mean i i really try to make sure no bullying in my classroom i mean if if i see it we we talk about it we deal with it um, you know i really I, I try to talk to kids you know i take them outside and talk to them one-on-one -on -one and you know I, I came up with a phrase a mantra for myself my first couple of years of teaching because it was so difficult and i was always stressed out always in fight or flight always scared didn't know what i was doing you know, thought it was the kids, you know, they say as a comedian, don't blame the audience. As a teacher, don't blame the kids, ah. not the kids, <laughs> not the kids. But that's um, your, so you, you, that's your you own have, spiritual awakening though. Yeah, so you have to learn tools and techniques. And for me, what I learned was whenever I'm in fight or flight, my only job is to get out of fight or flight. Mm. Whenever I'm in fight or flight, my only job is to get out of fight or flight. Because if I react when I'm in fight or flight, and this, and this applies to bullying, yeah. nothing, nothing good happens. You know what I mean? I used to think, oh, I have to yell at the kids and, you know, and get them in order because they're not in order. And it's like, no, no, I need to go sit down at my desk and compose myself. Yeah. And when I've breathed a little bit and I feel like I can handle the situation, 
then I can come back. And what just came to me now after five years of teaching mm. is whenever a kid is in fight or flight, my only job is to help them to get out of fight or flight. Right. And this is where the part where like, you know, my mentor taught me too that how your experience will benefit other people. Certainly the movie, That's right. the, the reunion film will definitely, so it's a reunion film dot com, correct? reunionfilm.com and the trailer is there as well thank you for mentioning that yeah no of course yeah. i saw the trailers and i'm looking forward to like really watching it and you yeah. know so just in case you're just joining me that this is dave rosenberg he is the actor you direct the movie too no i i acted in it i wrote it and i produced it so, i wrote it with my friends so he acted a movie which is whoa that's a wow already he wrote it and then he also uh you're the executive producer too yeah, producer, executive producer, uh, writer, actor. Yeah, too many hats. But it's good too though. Many. It's it's it's, it's <laughs> like that's like show your artistic ability. So you know, right. this is Dave Rosenberg. So it's the film re the 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 reunionfilm dot com. The reunionfilm dot com. Yeah. So go go visit the site, and we they, he's going to be in Nyack. So definitely go there. Um, now, why why did you move to California? You know, when I was about 36 or 37, I was living in New York. Nothing was really happening for me. The acting thing has, had kind of passed. I was working a bunch of random jobs. I was lost. You know, my dog died. I had a year of depression and I had always wanted to go to L.A. Since I was a kid, I wanted to go to, UC, to college at UCLA. Then when I became an actor, I wanted to come out here, but I wasn't ready. And I would come out periodically. And then I came out when I was 36 for a month and I was like, yeah, it's time. You know, I can handle it. I have a good support system. I have a good foundation. I'm, I'm relatively healthy, <laughs> you know, because because California will eat you up, you know, just yeah. like New York in a different way. It'll eat you up. Um, so you need to have that foundation and um, you need to, to you need to know who you are. Otherwise, Los Angeles will tell you who you are. Yeah, um, <laughs> well, that's that's in any in any in any city or anywhere right. else, you know, because if you don't know who you are and I think self, like you said, like um, uh, self-awareness self-discovery se you know spiritual awakening and this is what makes you like want to make this film and then uh you know what a blessing your grandmother gave you you know that that you can do this and 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 you know like educating people uh, what it's all about so i know certainly super happy how it's very grateful to partner up with you about bullying because our our mission is always about bullying you know like how to not be bullied and I'm super grateful to you for that because it was always my vision to link up with a charity and to hopefully at some point go out to schools and talk to kids. You know, my vision was to go out with the person who I felt bullied me and the two of us go out and talk to people and maybe at some point that'll happen. But I'm really, really grateful that we that we were able to pair up with you because, you know, doing a movie is a great thing, but there's a lot of ego involved yeah. and there's a lot of self involved and me, 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 and I'm doing podcasts and radio and all these things and distribution and all that stuff and i get caught up in that you know just like anybody else and so to be able to be of service yeah and make this about not me make this about something bigger than me make this about helping people is, is very grounding in the way that teaching has been grounding for me yeah so um school is closed so when school is open in september i'm looking forward to having you uh because our, our schools our schools start late because of the pandemic so our school opens september 13 but once school is over definitely you know come and and speak but in the meantime you know because uh, our mailing list includes our parents anyway so uh this tape is going to be processed in podcast in spotify and also in youtube and then my parents will watch it and also uh, our students will be able to watch it because we're the after school program so as before we end by the way um you can click and subscribe for sri yang uh, in the youtube uh, what do you before we end like anything else that you want to tell us and anything else that you want to share about us or, or uh, to share about you that we don't know <laughs> you know I, I would just say you know we're, we're in a very difficult time with the pandemic and everything and I, I just hope that it's an opportunity for healing you know we've seen a lot of conflict in our country in the last year or two is a lot of strife there's a lot of death. You know, I want, a lot I want of this death. And I, I want this yeah. and, and, and a lot of death. And I, I just hope that people take an opportunity to heal, you know, ch chill out with the, with the technology for a little bit, you know, go outside, go for a walk, you know, nature, nature is calling to us. Yeah. Nature is calling up to us to, to take care of it because, so, you know, we, we, we forget all about, you know, 
uh, what's going on with the planet and gl- and global warming and everything. And uh, so anyway, I, w- I don't want to go off on a tangent, but um, you know, just I hope everybody can just try to to, to heal. You know, let's yeah. let's have this be an opportunity to heal. I think I if hope you, this movie can do that. Yeah, and I hope you, I think if you take care of yourself, right, and then I think it, it it's like a, a de- dominoes effect. Then you'll take care of other things. But I'm glad you brought about the. Uh, the the climate we actually next week we're going to have a 13 year old kid theo is going to talk about climate change nice and i want to be able to see from the next generations and how they do it you know and so i'm i'm looking forward for that but uh but talking about the green so you don't have to go to nyack and leaving new york city at 7 45 you can go to nyack earlier like us and then you know and and just enjoy the different scenery and because we're certainly looking forward to it and then you know do that but anyway thank you so much for joining us i really appreciate it happy you know i know you have to teach so happy teaching bye everybody <laughs> thank you so thank much you. Hi, everybody all right i'm esther yang if you'd like to see more content if you want to watch more videos don't forget to click like subscribe and then don't forget to click that bell button bye